billions of dollars of commercial property loans are coming due in the next few years. It's causing some pretty big concerns in the financial sector. Our next guest is expecting what he calls a slow-moving train wreck for regional banks. Joining us right now is Scott Reckler. He's RXR Realty Chairman and CEO. He's also on the New York Fed's Board of Directors. And, and Scott, it's good to see you. It's great to be here, Becky. Thanks. All right, let's talk about the concerns you lay out in this white paper. You are looking at this, and how much is coming due in these loans in this year? Yeah, so, I mean, there's a trillion dollars of commercial real estate loans that are coming due this year. And even when I was here last year, I talked about this sort of slow moving train wreck. I think what happened is the train never left the station. And part of that was, uh, you know, there was this lack of acceptance and one people wanted to see if there was going to be an injection of capital that maybe you know lifted all values and i think now there's a recognition that's not happening and then we also had the a bank loan term uh, uh, program that was put in place that was a little bit like a shock absorber and that comes due next week right. so i think the problems haven't been dealt with that's the challenge right and there's this triple whammy of uh, of challenges that get exacerbated as if you believe interest rates are going to be higher for longer, it's going to weigh down on it, right? Higher interest rates means that the loans that were done when interest rates were low are going to have to be refinanced at higher rates, which are out of balance. Uh, at the same time, you have the regulators in on the banks now very, very focused on their commercial real estate exposure, trying to you know, reduce that exposure so that reduces lending and creates a credit challenge. And then you have fundamentals. Of course, a lot of the commercial real estate sectors like office, uh, transitioning multifamily, uh, rent regulated multifamily that also weigh in on this and so the, that that has to be dealt with and it hasn't been dealt with yet and i think 2024 is the year where it be, you know we begin to actually start addressing that challenge i mean we, we know these problems are here it's been pretty well telegraphed we know occupancy rates for commercial real estate office buildings in big cities down what is it almost 20 percent yeah almost 20 percent across this across sector. the entire yeah. sector so you're you're looking at these big problems you know they're there I think the question becomes, how do we deal with it? And is the solution that there will be buyers at lower prices who will come in? Or is there some sort of either government help or Fed help in, in the form of lower rates or other loans that go out? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, I think the, the first way to deal with it is there has to be a acknowledgement that the values are off, right? And th I think some of the bigger banks over this past year have been taking significant amount of reserves that position them where they can ultimately um, you start, you know, reducing their, their loans uh, and taking the reserves and then ultimately selling them at the right price. But there has not been enough transaction activity to crystallize what pricing is. And I think once transaction activity... The mark-to-market is pretty tough, right? Right. Now. And I think the mark-to-market is questionable on a lot of these banks as to if they, have they really brought down um, their marks, their values, to where they will ultimately trade in an illiquid market today. And that, I think, will determine how severe this is ultimately going to be. And, it, and it's not the big banks, right? When you hear the, you know, the regulators and the Fed and Treasury talk about this, this isn't systemically concerning because the big banks are so well capitalized. And even if they have um, some heavy commercial real estate exposure relative to everything else, they can absorb it. But it's these smaller and regional banks that have the heavier concentration, don't have the reserves, haven't really established the reserves, and now the regulators are, are focused on this. I mean, everyone can, one keeps saying, that was an exception, and that was an exception when a bank goes bad. And then we have NYCB again, you know, this, the last, uh, this last month and again last week. You know, they have $18 billion of, uh, of loans on the regulator New York City multifamily. Right. You know, what's the mark on that? I don't know. Uh, Scott, let me just try and understand your perspective on this, because obviously you're involved in real estate, so you probably have some exposure to some of these things, too. I know that last month, or I guess it was January, you announced a deal uh, or a a $500 million joint venture to buy distressed offices in New York City. So you could be somebody who's benefiting from the downside, but my guess is you probably have a lot on the line, too, if interest rates don't come down. Yeah, and I, th and I think that's, you know, this is different than 08, where I think you can have this, this moment in time where people can buy opportunistically, and then rates are going to go back up when this is infusion of capital. This is much more like the early 90s, where this is going to be a more broadly effect, affected, more nuanced. So it's not just capital that's going to change it. You need people that have the conviction to understand where the opportunities are and the capabilities to, to say, okay, these properties are going to be successful. So take New York, where we're investing with Aries. You know, the, if you look at the New York market, some segments of the market right now are recovering extremely well. If you own a Class A building, you know, we've seen an uptick through all of our buildings post Labor Day, people coming back to the workplace. So I would say, we're going to see, you know, 2024, we could be at levels in terms of leasing back to where we were pre-COVID, but they're concentrated in the best buildings. The vacancies concentrated in the worst buildings. And so it's not this macro play, 
to say that we're going to you know, be able to invest across the board and, and take a bet on office. It's like a stock picker play. Which are ones are going to be successful? But you wouldn't be buying some of those lower or, or buying into some of the lower or mid-tier Buildings. No, you're only looking for classes. That's right, and, and you, you got You have to really say, you know, what is the best of the rest? What are the best buildings that will ultimately recover? And what's happening across all commercial real estate, it's being painted with the same brush, right? There's not a distinction between, uh, you know, is it good or bad? Even on the multifamily side, we're going to see the same thing. And I think that's the Achilles heel that we have yet to see that's going to hit the regional I, banks. I just mean, for you personally, would it benefit you more for the Fed to lower rates and, and mean that you can refinance any of the existing loans you already have? Or yeah, would listen, you be better off if they didn't and there's more distressed stuff out there? Listen, I, I think at the end of the day, there's, there's a balance. Obviously, the longer rates stay higher, I think there's more distress. I think for the industry, and frankly, there's enough imbalance right now that some level of rates moderating will help ease this transition because there's these capital structures are upside down and they oh, they're going to need to be re-equitized there's going to need to be write-offs one way or the other and so the longer rates are higher the, you know i think the 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 result and is going to be more extreme and so if you can bring it down a little, it can create some of this transaction. Yeah, just, we've had a guest earlier this morning who said that if you look at things like crypto and gold prices and see how much speculation that has gone on, that's a suggestion that there's plenty of liquidity in the markets right now. There may be areas of the markets that need help, commercial real estate being one of the biggest. Uh, the federal government could probably use lower rates so that their interest rates that's don't right. go up as quickly, too. But there are plenty of people who think there's more than enough liquidity in the markets right now, and the Fed shouldn't do anything. Yeah, and listen, I think that's the part of the, the nuanced challenge that the Fed faces, right, is you have a very uneven economy. You have, you know, the, the big businesses, their outlook is positive. Small businesses, their outlook is negative. You know, the, the affluent consumer is, is, is actively spending, you know, the, 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 more than ever. You know, the, the low-income people can hardly afford their rent, their food, and their prices, right? So we have this weird dichotomy, yeah. but one's pushing growth and one's not. And that's also where there's the arbitrage, right, is that some things are just going to be painted as toxic, like commercial real estate. And so then if they're mispriced, you, find you the can find the ones that work. Right.